In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create swing layouts in IntelliJ Ideas Swing UI Designer. Now the trick with layouts and swing is that oftentimes we want to nest layouts to get the right look and feel. In other words, what stretches when we pull east and west, what stretches when we pull north and south, so on and so forth. And it's a good idea to come up with a plan at first because I found with the Swing UI Designer, as with many Swing UI Designers, that it's easy to create layouts up front, but then after you have those layouts, it's a bit challenging to change them around. Maybe change them from a border layout to a grid layout or something like that is a little more difficult after the fact. And really, it's just a good idea to think it through. What I recommend is use professional storyboarding software like Figma or Envision to think about what you want your application to look like. But even without that, just draw something out and think about what you want to have stretch vertically is the screen is resized and what you want to have stretch horizontally is the screen is widened. So this is kind of a sketch of what I want to implement. I want to create a series of vehicle objects, so Prius, Mustang, Sonic, so on and so forth. So we'll start with the title at the top. Then after that, I'll have some kind of label and some kind of drop down that lets me choose what vehicle I want to create. Then I will have actually three more text fields that follow that, even though I'm just showing two here. I'll have one for miles per gallon, gallons of gas, and odometer. And you know, we might even want to add more text fields for other attributes, like the attributes that are specific to a Mustang. Can it be a convertible? Or the attributes that are specific to a Prius, like what's the battery charge, that kind of stuff. So we want to have these up here. And then after that, I will have some list, repeating list of all of the objects that I've created. Then down at the bottom, we can have a button bar. So the first step is, if I stretch this, let's say wide, what gets wider? Well, most of the screen will get wider. The title, probably these text fields here, uh, the list of items will. Button bar, yeah, I mean, that'll get wider, not a big deal. The bigger question is what happens when we stretch it to be taller? What should actually get taller? Well, the title doesn't need to get taller. That's pretty much fixed. The labels, the combo box, the text fields, those don't necessarily need to get taller. The a button bar doesn't need to get taller. But the list of items, if the user is stretching the screen to be taller, more than likely the user wants to see more detail in that list of items. And this is where thinking through layouts gets very important. Because with a border layout, if we stretch taller, then west, central, and east get taller. Uh, but not north and south. If we stretch wider, then, then uh, north, south, and central get wider, but not east and west. So, okay, so we need a border layout for the main form. Within that, uh, we'll put a button bar in the south part of that border layout because one trick with a border layout is it can only have one component. But that component can be a JPane. And JPane is essentially a place where you can have yet another layout manager and yet more components. So in that south-facing um, part of our border layout, we'll put a JPane uh, JPAN or JPanel, and then we'll use the flow layout and we'll just stack buttons next to each other, easy enough. That's fairly straightforward. Where things get really tricky is in this middle part. So we don't need this to get taller as the screen gets taller, but we need this to get taller. So we actually have to nest yet another border layout within the central part of the border layout that represents the whole screen. So in this border layout, we might put all of this stuff up in north because we know that north won't get taller as we stretch the screen taller. Now, reason why we want to do that is we'll put our list of items in the central part of this inner border layout. So it's a central part of a border layout within the central part of another border layout, which means when we stretch the screen up and down, that part is going to rise and shrink. That, if you're not used to it, that's really tricky to think through. And that's why I say it really helps us sketch these things out. So let's go ahead and get started. I've created a new branch called Swing. So all of the things that I'm adding in this video and the videos that follow will be in that branch if you want to take a look at it quickly. Now to create a new Java form, it's fairly straightforward. We simply right click, say Swing UI Designer, and then GUI form. I struggle a little bit with coming up with a name for this Swing form 
because I already have a class called driver, so I don't want to call it driver, but I also hate putting the word form in something we know that it's a form. So, But nonetheless, we'll go ahead and call it driver form. And note, it's going to create a class, which is effectively going to be our controller. Now note that we start with a form, and that has a panel. Remember, a panel doesn't really have a user interface. It's just a place where we can put a layout, and therefore a place where we can put components. And you notice that the layout manager, it predefined for us as grid layout manager, IntelliJ. Let's change that to border layout. Now, we can start adding more to it. Remember that a border layout has north, south, east, west, central, and each of those can only have one item inside. But that item can be a J panel, and that J panel can have other items inside of that. So let's put this together one at a time. I'm going to create our button bar panel. And we'll make that flow layout. Now let me put a label towards the top. Note that most of these start with J. Little history there. Uh, Swing was Java's second implementation of a user interface rendering engine. And it came out very early. It came out in Java 1.2, also known as Java 2, which was 97, uh, when Java really came out in 95. Prior to that, there was something called AWT. So to differentiate between AWT and Swing, uh, they typically put a J before the component names in Swing. So anyway, we put the label up at the top and put some kind of text in there. So now we have our north part and our south. Not worried about the buttons in that button bar just yet. Let's worry about putting another J panel in the center area. So note, I mouse over and it plops right here in center. And you notice border side center. Now, once again, each panel will have its own layout. So this one in the middle, I'm going to make yet another border layout, which is a little bit tricky, uh, but there we go. Now, inside of this, I need to put, guess what? Two more panels. One in north, so it won't stretch as we pull the frame upward, and one in center that will stretch as we pull the frame upward. This is a little bit tricky, I'll admit. Might not uh, be able to get it to work on the first try, but uh, I will do my best. Looks like we got it to work. Now, the trick is if you take a look here, we have form, panel one, JPL, panel bar, J panel, J panel, J panel. This is going to get really confusing unless we actually name these. So this one I'll call, I'll call PNL center main. So center of the main form, essentially. Then this one up top, I'll call it PNL inner north so that inner panel it's the north part of that inner panel i hope that makes sense uh, now we have the one that's in the center part of the panel that's nested in the center part of the major panel that makes sense looking good so far uh, we have our button bar and let's just call this one pnl main panel that just yeah kind of helps us so we know what we're dealing with all right, uh, now we can add some buttons to our button bar. Simply drag it. Let's see if we can drop it right here. Ooh, yeah, look at that. See, if I mouse over, you notice it, it hovers kind of in that south area, but on the same note, it's also highlighting that button bar in the, in the navigation tree to confirm I know where I'm putting this. Ah, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted. We'll call this one BTN save. And text will be save. Note that we will cover in a future lecture. Uh, what I'm doing right now is what we would have done in the 90s, designing a form, and that is put widgets on it and put text in those widgets. The problem with that is that text has to be internationalized because not everybody speaks the language that you speak, and if, if you assume they do, you're really limiting your audience. That's number one. Number two issue with text is that it takes time to read. Well, of course it does, but what's the alternative? The alternative is to use a well-known icon that's known universally around the world, uh, no matter what language you speak. So for save, a picture of a floppy disk is better than the word save. So what we can do is put that in the icon here, but we're gonna we're just worried about layouts right now. We're not worried about that. So save, and I'll tell you what, while I'm here, I just want to demonstrate this concept of a flow layout and add something we're going to need eventually. So note I can drag another button down there, and I can say drive. Maybe we want to drive a certain distance, so I'll grab a text field, and we'll call this one TXT distance. 
now we have all of this to deal with in the center component, which is where we're going to do most of our stuff. The first thing I will do is in the center component of the inner J panel, I'm going to change the layout manager to flow layout. If I only want to have one component there, you know what, flow layout is just great. And I'm going to take a list and I'm going to plop it in there. And that list will be our list of vehicles. Now, I'll warn you, I'm not going to implement all of this in code in this video. We just want to look at layouts now. We want to look at resizing layouts and the like. So, you know, we're happy with what we have so far. So we have that list. Now, a little more work's going to go on up above where we want to allow the user to input certain information about a vehicle. So this layout manager, I'm going to use one called Form Layout, which is a plugin from Jay Goodies. There used to be one called Grid Layout, and frankly, I'm surprised it's not available in the IntelliJ Swing GUI Designer. A grid Layout would just basically size all the components the same size. That's not available, but this one is a close second. We'll likely need to add a dependency to our pom.xml to include this library, but nonetheless, okay, I think we're good so far. So now we're going to do label. There we go. And next to label, we'll do a combo box. So see, I'm going to drag the combo box up here. Wee. Now we can see as I do that, it's kind of starting to put these into a grid. We have label on combo box. We're going to continue this paradigm for a little bit more. Now, if we go to driver form, you'll see that it's actually creating variables for each of these UI components that we've created. Um, but one warning, don't leave them at their default name, combo box one, text field one, text field two, text field three. You will quickly forget what text field one is, like what's getting stored there. And it just is not very self descriptive. So before we do anything else, let's go back to our form and give these some valid names. Now the text field, the combo box, those are the most important because we're going to be programming against it. The label's not so important because we don't tend to program against that. That's read only. Of course, there are exceptions. But my rule of thumb is absolutely positively give a meaningful name to anything you're going to program against. So the drop down, I'll call make model. TXT odometer. All right, now they have a bit more meaningful names. We go back to the form, and we see that they have been renamed accordingly here. Next step is consider our program. We have a good set of DTOs or a good model, which is our vehicle, Prius, uh, Sonic, Mustang. And we started by using those in a kind of like a hybrid command line interactive mode where we were prompting with J Option pane. Then we saw how we could read data from a file to create these objects. Those are two different user interfaces to that same structure we've created in the background. And now we're adding a third way to interact with that, a third user interface, which is Swing. But the trick is somehow we have to get the user onto this form, or we have to be able to start the program by starting this form. Now remember, how do, what, what's the first method that ever gets executed in a Java program? Well, that's public static void main. So we can add public static void main to just about any class, and then that class is one that can we can do right-click and run. And if we take a look at this current source code, we don't have public static void main. So we need to add public static void main, but we specifically need it to kick off this form. Now, fortunately, there's an easy way to do so. Uh, I right-click, generate, and then there's form main, which is a special kind of main. I mean, it's still public static void main with the same signature, but it knows how to start our program and then invoke this form and show this form. So, okay, so it starts with a JFrame. JFrame is a Java class that represents the entire swing UI that we're creating, and basically all the panels get added to that JFrame. Then it says, okay, well, take this a panel that we've been working on and added to that JFrame, and it refers to PNL main. Now let's remember what's PNL main. It's this big overriding panel that contains all of the sub panels inside of it. So we're saying start a form, then render this pane inside of that form. After that, set default close operation. Okay, what happens when we close? We terminate the program. Pack, set visible, there we go. Notice as soon as I do that, we get a green arrow here. 
I mentioned this a bit earlier. If we write, we might need to update our Maven repository, our Palm XML, because that form layout actually comes from a third-party library. But hey, guess what? No problem. It is Maven. So all we have to do is a quick Google J Goodies form layout Maven, and then we come to this repository that says, "Oh, okay, we'll just add this dependency to your Palm XML." So copy. And within dependencies, we already have a dependencies section that has our JUnit test. So I'm simply going to add uh, this new dependency. And then you see we kind of have this like load Maven changes button. So I'm going to hit that and tell it to go out and find this library, download it, and include it into my project. As soon as it does that, the text that was red now turns white to say, okay, we're all good there. Uh, let me try to run it one more time now. And voila. Take a look at our form. Now note what happens when I stretch. You notice that this area gets a little bit longer, but nothing else does. Now right now it looks blank, right? But remember that's where we have our JList, which is eventually going to show all of the vehicles that we've created. And if I'm a user and I stretch this, it's probably because I want to see more vehicles. Now if I stretch right and left, you notice that this centers. Uh, this form in the middle does not follow as we stretch, so I might want to tweak that one a little bit because, you know, if I'm stretching this way, it's probably because I want to type more in here. But nonetheless, you know, for first go, it's not perfect, but I'm very happy with where we are because I've seen much worse. So a couple more things I'm going to do so we can see what this looks like. First of all, I put some dummy data into that J list, and notice... You can see a little bit better this time when I expand and shrink that we're effectively showing more and less of that list. Secondly, this box where I want to put miles to drive each vehicle is a little bit small, smaller than it looks here. So I'm going to make it to from 0 to columns 15, where columns effectively represents a number of letters that that will contain. Let's go ahead and run and see what our output looks like. So you see now that we have a bit more space here. One odd thing I noticed that I'm not terribly worried about is that it's not showing the full text for the save and drive buttons, but that's just how I have my monitors set up. Uh, I'm recording on my primary monitor on my laptop, but I actually designated my secondary monitor as the primary, so you wouldn't see my Windows bar, you know, my start bar pop up and back. So this form actually starts on my uh, secondary monitor, and then I drag it over. When I drag it over, for whatever reason, it shrinks those buttons, but it looks just fine on my primary monitor. So that's one of those weird things we could probably dig into a little bit, but I'm satisfied that I see the buttons on the secondary monitor. And also, we're eventually going to replace that text with images anyway, so that's why I'm not terribly worried about it. And we could probably tweak a couple other things while we're here. You know, it, it's a bit of form and adjustment, but at this point, I'm satisfied that we have created a layout successfully by nesting several layout, well, J panels with their own layout. So border layout, a label on top of that. In the center, we have another border layout with a grid layout on the top, and then a J list in the middle. And then on the bottom of the main layout, we have our button bar, which is a flow layout in the south pane of a border layout. I know that's a lot of layouts. Uh, it is a bit tricky, but uh, this is how we make forms in swing. So as always, I certainly hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.